EV West has brought out an electric E36 that has like a Tesla drivetrain and a pretty wild setup. It's like 2,750 pounds. So it's actually a bit lighter than a stock E36. So we're gonna see what it's like to drift an electric car. I've never done that before. So it's weird. <laughs> no, so it's fully drivable. It's not anything weird on the throttle. I feel like it's like a normal car, but like very, it does whatever you need it to. But what's weird to me is, I don't know if it does something different on diesel, but like when the car is at fast, like actual car speed, you can control everything right. But when you start to slow it down, like a decreasing radius, gets hard. so let me turn the region. Yeah. It gets too yeah. much and just spins you out off throttle. Yeah. What's up, man? How are you? Chelsea. Yeah, man. Times, Very dude. nice to meet you. Yeah, so you too. reached out to me, what, three years ago? Yeah, 2012 when we got back That's from Bikespeed. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And he was like, I got this electric E36 and I want you to drift it. And at the time, there was like a lot going on. I was super busy running my own program and everything. And I was living in Florida. They're yep. based out here in California. So it was like, how can we make this happen? Let's make it happen. And just never really happened well, with anything that's going just, on. You know. But now we're here, <laughs> yeah. it happened, and we have a full electric E36 behind us. Um, I got the uh, ability to drive this earlier, and it is ignorant. It is very easy to get used to, and honestly, like this could potentially be the future of a lot of things uh, coming up. And I'm sure it's the present to you right now. It's the present <laughs> fun toy, that's for sure. Right. I mean, we all had fun in it today, right? So, yeah, for yeah, sure. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about the car, <laughs> of the chassis-wise, and then we'll right. jump into the motor stuff. Yeah, so, uh, and you're probably better at telling us about the chassis being an E36 Well, well I, but, what you got done to it, you know, like, you know. Yeah, it's a 95 M3, and, uh, you know, we built it in uh, 2011 for Pikes Peak. Uh, Bill Steen helped us out, ground control helped us out, you know, a lot of guys jumped in stop tech and stuff, so they helped us build the car originally. Originally we had two DC motors in it, had about 900 foot-pounds of torque, uh, so it was good. It was a strong car. I think I reached out to you because it was just too much power for me to drift. I yeah. I couldn't it keep had, it in line, right? At that point, it had a glide in it. It had right? a two-speed power glide, yep. so you could do a little bit of shifting and downshifting and stuff. But it was just, it was a, it was a beast. It wasn't uh, as polished as it is now. Got it. Now we have the Tesla drive in it, and we're running at 400 volts. We have smoother power delivery. We have a ton more torque. I mean, yeah. Uh, yeah. I witnessed that It earlier. was like, what are we running in the back? Pizza cutters? <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. So, uh... So it's just fun. It's just a, you know, and it's it's a it's, we can drive it on the street. It's street legal. It's quiet. It's well mannered. I think. Got it. Um, 
Yeah, it's an E36, right? It's everything you want it to be. So, like, let me put this vision in your head. I have been drifting my whole life, and I have never in my life heard the things that you hear when you drive this car. And I'm now scared to drive gas cars because I feel like I can't hear what's actually happening in the car. Yeah, like that's, that's common feedback. Again, the crazy. racers, especially, talk to anybody. You know, Carlin Dunn, any of those guys that rode a motorcycle at Pikes Peak. Yeah, and they'll tell you it's a it's an advantage because you you are listening to your tires. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, especially out here with this sealed pavement, it was very very noisy. Uh, but again, like I'm in drift, I can hear the steering rack. I yeah. can hear the front suspension working. Yeah. Like when I get it on throttle and I'm not going super fast, I can hear the tire hitting the fender well. Yeah. Like, you know, even in a stock quiet car, you don't hear that kind yeah. of stuff. So that's like the cool factor, all that stuff. But actually performance wise, it's like I got in this thing and like, I mean, within the second lap, it was like totally driftable throttle control we went out I tandem with Vaughn and it was like really no problem like this car has stock steering angle so it made it a little bit difficult um, and the car's weight distribution is perfect like it feels like just like a normal car yeah so it's 50 50 and we're at 27 50 for the whole car. got it yeah. yeah so you're under 3,000 pounds with a driver which is still yeah, like, a full tank of electrons right yeah there you go <laughs> yeah which is so. crazy because you think about it and you're like okay a caged e36 track car right. weighs about the same right. with an iron block motor and a transmission and all of that mm -hmm. stuff a drive shaft this doesn't even have that right so even the serviceability seems simpler and easier than a gas motor. yeah i think so and also we're not trying to replace that stuff right, right. that's the key component of this we're trying to uh give just an alternative something else right, right. to add to it you know superchargers didn't replace turbos this isn't going to replace either of them right but it's going to be a really fun addition that just makes the width of the products and stuff wider you know right so if you had to think of any downsides of this what would it be well the downsides are all you know solvable problems obviously the battery time um, but all of these things when we got into it you know eight nine years ago battery weight was a non-starter it was just so heavy i mean our original pikes peak car was 3800 pounds it was almost two tons yeah uh now we've taken you know like 1200 pounds out almost all of that was battery weight uh, and we're going to see more of this. You know, you've got yeah. some of these product announcements like Tesla's new Roadster with a 200 kilowatt hour battery and a tiny little car. You know, if you can get that in here, now you've got 600 miles of drifting ahead of you, right. right? So you can see where it's going. Hey, maybe you don't need the 600 miles, but what if we took a massive amount of that weight out? So right. we're going to, very soon, we're going to see, you know, 1,000 horsepower plus cars that are under 2,000 pounds. Perfect. Yeah. Two to one. I like that. Yeah, ratio. two to one, right? <laughs> that sounds fun. I think the fastest thing I've ever driven was like 1,200 horsepower and 2,400 pounds. So that's two to one. It's about the same, which yeah. is absolutely ignorant. And there's some weird, you know, I, it's it's a little bit more behaved, right? Because you have a little bit more linear delivery. The resolution is insane. Right, and yeah. you don't have, uh, there's no real latency in it. It's just right there. It is. And the weight and the distribution of the weight stays the same. So, yeah, it's not poorly designed like a 911 where it understeers when your gas tank gets empty but right. you don't have any of that weight shift and in some of these races where you're carrying more fuel you're going to have right. you're going to start with the same distribution that you ended with and, yeah that's and actually a really good thing to think about it's a well. minor thing you know you pick the the there's a lot of pluses well, I mean, and minor, minuses. but still like yeah. in a in a you know endurance race when you're carrying around 230 pounds of fuel like that's pretty different mm -hmm. but just some cars it makes a difference with handling. yeah for sure yeah and an rld34 loaded in the back it would you know it slide around a little bit more right you know absolutely. and then when the tank started to drain down you know in our endurance racing it right. was a little bit better behaved. yeah faster handled yeah. better balance is better yeah. that's really cool well yeah, yeah pop the hood let's show us what yeah. you got going on yep. there this is not the normal e36 under <laughs> right here so <clears throat> in a real quick nutshell we have our main battery pack up here some safety and connectivity. This has some high voltage fuses. You can actually pop a fuse in okay. an electric car. Uh, and then we have our safety switch. If you don't know what you're doing, it's just got a big on off on there. Right. Uh, but really, that's about it. You know, we've got our, uh, we have an electric steering, electric yep. servo steering in this because we talked about that. We lose the hydraulic pump to take right. the gas motor out. Uh, and that's essentially it. So what's the coolant tank up here for? So we are running uh, coolant lines down the tunnel to the motor and the transmission in the rear and it's actually cooling the electronics in the inverter 
uh, the motor housing, and it's actually, uh, there is some heat sink material in the transmission case as well, so okay. a little bit of tranny fluid cooling as well. Nice, okay. And this is the cooler up here, or? Yeah, okay. right, and we ran all day on this cooler. This is, that is uh, an oil cooler, small. it's about one square foot. Yeah. Uh, and we're developing the car now and playing around with it. We'll probably put a little bit more cooling in it, but we really didn't have any real cooling issues today Got so it. i was pretty happy with that so like you know? as far as like obviously people might have a, a question like what's hot in temperature wise for this kind of stuff well it depends on the componentry you know yeah. every, everything has a different setting your your batteries have a limit uh the motor has a limit but the the main thing the the motor controller the electronics that's what you want to keep the coolest like a speed control type right yeah. yeah so in our coolant circuit we go into that first, first. cool yeah right so like what kind of water temps do you see then uh so we're seeing uh you know about 35 to 40 C is what our coolant temp is. Okay. Yeah. So it's yeah, down that's 110, like, 120 degrees. Right, yeah. so that's like a hot day some places. Yeah. And yeah. is that that's what it normally is around? Or is like what yeah, if, it's, if you're in a racing scenario where you're doing 10 laps, it might get hotter? Yeah, something. we'll see. So we saw earlier, I saw a stator temp of like 100 degrees, 110. So that's about that's 200. that's Celsius? Or? Yeah, Celsius, okay. right. Yeah. So, so that's so like two, operating temp for yeah. a normal car. And right? that's just the internals of the motor. Got but it. everything else... Uh, uh, you know the electronics want to stay cooler and stuff. Yeah, I would have thought it would have been much hotter. Yeah, no, good. and that's why you know when we came in. I was like, put your hand on the motor. Right. It's, a lot of people are surprised. You know, you're not yeah. dealing with that internal combustion heat, and you realize, right. you know, with all that, uh, it you just generate so much heat. You yeah. know, in this, uh, it, it's actually impressive how much heat it generates without spark. You know, you're just literally running, uh, you know, transistors like you'd see in a radio. Right. You know? Got it. And then you said the, width, the weight distribution is like 50-50, so what's the, yeah. what's the battery did, pack? You know, I'd like to say we totally planned it. We did some rough calculations, put the components where they thought they should go, dropped it down on the long acre scales, and it was everyone was just like... That's awesome. It, it, I love it when you build a car and it just works yeah, out like that. Because yeah. there's so many like, wake up in the middle of the night thinking well, about, yeah, oh man, and, that's I mean, going to be wrong. Look <laughs> at our clearance, like we had to pull a quarter inch off of the yeah. support and we're right up against the firewall so we really didn't have too much to play with anyways yep. you know well we did i have, mean the stock bmw motor is yeah, in the firewall it's in the firewall <laughs> and it's right the up fan to is right here support, yeah. so that's pretty good mm -hmm. i'll say that and it's stock uh, bmw subframes like yep. everything's modular mm -hmm. still mm -hmm. that's pretty awesome all right, well, yeah, we, and we, we did, you know, the, the little things, too. like we got that little, uh, for the convertible, the bracing up front. Got a few it. little things to stiffen it up. We brought the cage suit and the struts and just yep. a few little minor things. Yeah, know. but even still, it's like one of those things where you're not really adding any more weight than it was there. Because the stock motor in this, that if it were turbo with an intercooler and radiator and transmission, the package is 750 pounds. Yeah, so. and, and I should mention, you know, it, it is a Pikes Peak cage. Right. right, 120 wall. I mean, it's a heavy, yeah. heavy cage because it's not your Pikes Peak. It's not the first hit; it's the 13 you take after. Right, that, right, you know? right, right, right. So, or um, if you end up on your roof for that. But I mean, one. we, you know, we kind of talked about it earlier off camera about pulling half the battery way out, some other yeah. things, and we have a car that very easily could be about 24, 2300 pounds. That's right crazy. Yeah, that's and still awesome. have the same horsepower. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that's wild. So then inside, is there anything different inside that you would uh, see? So no, I know, obviously, not, no clutch pedal. No clutch pedal. Um, yeah, not, not big gnarly Pikes Peak cage. Yeah, uh, but not really different, you know, um, just a regular E36. Yeah, uh, and then it has a screen for your vitals and whatnot mm -hmm. to see the temps of everything, your voltage, yeah. your range, all that stuff. We're just stuff. now playing with electronics, and we had Race Pack out here today. We do on our bench unit at the shop on the dyno. We're running a race pack full data display. Got um, it. Because you need some specialty stuff. The the motor's red line is sixteen thousand five hundred. Right. You're not going to find an ant. Well, you might find an analog needle to do that, but it's going to be a tough look, right? right. So we're going to uh, design a a system that will be turnkey for our Tesla customers, where Got we it. already map all the temperatures, all the limits, and everything, and you can just drop a race pack in. So, Perfect. Yeah, just you That's know, awesome. just take care of a lot of the stuff that you do a lot of the work, and then it can be a repetitive solution. You know? For sure. And then the back, this is where the magic happens, yeah. right? I guess you could call it a, a rear engine. Yeah. Right? Well, so what's really cool I see is like it's a complete factory, well, it seems to be from here, subframe. It's just everything's yeah. bolted behind yeah. it. Right. Right. So your axle location is good. Like all the geometry of everything off the bat when I look yeah. at it is like, damn, that's it's pretty all stock. Yeah. That's pretty good. We did use, I'm glad you noticed that. We did use the stock subframe. We had to notch it out and move the two rear perches up just a tiny bit for a little yep. bit of clearance around the axles. Uh, we did uh, machine 
you know, BMW axle flanges. So those are stock axles, stock suspension, all the pickup points and every, the geometry, trailing arms, everything is yeah, stock. which yeah. is the key because these yeah. are the best drifting chassis because yeah. the geometry is really, really good. <laughs> Um, they really are. Man. Yeah, so that's really interesting to see that. I was like, oh man, that's cool. And what's neat too is like if, if you were ever to run this in Formula Drift, like they would have l much less of a problem because it does use factory subframe mounting pickup points and all that stuff. So right. that's a big thing in Formula D to be able to do that. And then yeah. it just has a rear mount in the back here. And uh, it's and you can see it'd probably be real easy to convert to Formula D, just kind of make that more the subframe mm -hmm. and all this stuff, a removable clip. And, yeah, for sure. You know. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, basically, in all the comp cars, we run like a big sandwich plate here. Right. Yeah. And and in race cars, this would be taking place at yeah, the fuel we're not, cell. Yeah, I mean, if you look, we're not even attached to anything yeah. back here. So. Yeah. No, it's cool. Yeah. Yeah, the setup's awesome. And and to be honest with you, we're running the same tires we ran on our in, run on our FD car at like about eight pounds of pre tire pressure, which is about as low as we go ever drifting. And this thing didn't have any problem blowing the tires off. So. On on reduced power. On reduced yeah, power. We were running. Most of the day, on average, we were about uh, 50 to 60 percent. Right. Yeah. At the end, he turned it up, and it was yeah. wild. Definitely. Yeah, for definitely the electric crazy. guys, we were running about uh, 250 kilowatt out of 450 most of the day. Yeah. So yeah, so he was saying on the dyno, it's not very super impressive, but I can tell you that this thing probably makes every bit of 750, 800 wheel, and probably very similar torque numbers. Yeah, I think the torque numbers are in the thousands because of yep. the production. Yeah, so I yeah, think for it's sure. like two or three thousand, four thousand somewhere. It's just absurd. With the gear yeah. reduction. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, it was crazy. It's like uh, like we have our Roush Yates motors and our Mustangs, and those things are like the pinnacle of performance yeah, for a naturally right. aspirated yeah. motor, and they have insane response. And this thing has as much response in the RPM and even more at the bottom end because it's on from zero RPM. So it was definitely interesting to drive, um, but also just like an eye opener to me because it's like this thing's. I was thinking I was going to get in this thing, it was going to be hard to drive, but it is super simple. Like the power delivery is super smooth, it's instant. There's no like, you know, you get in gas cars nowadays and drive them in the throttles lane. Yeah, they, you know, everything's drive by wire. Right. There's no such thing as a throttle cable. Anymore. Right. Uh, and it's that latency, you yep. know, and, and the bummer is in the new cars, especially automatics, they have to talk to the transmission and there are, there's some algorithms in there for efficiency where yeah. they're really just trying to hit those fuel mileage standards yeah. that they got to hit. And all the um, cafe yeah, stuff. And this, and all yeah, that. right, all that. In this, you have something, you know, I think one thing that could be mentioned is, is kind of the reliability and tuning factor. You're like, you're always really tuned. Like, if you want to tune this thing up and make it run as best as it can, you just put it on the charger. Right. <laughs> right so, or turn the power and, up. Well, but all <laughs> day like, we were turning it down. We were right. having traction issues yep. right and so now we're talking about changing gears because we think that will help right right uh so you know we've got a lot of fun work yeah ahead. no for sure <laughs> right i can't yeah, wait to like, try some of the stuff we talked about yeah yeah for sure for me it would be like out of the box like coming here and driving this this far succeeded my expectations and awesome. now, Thanks, now you have man. me interested Thanks. for sure yeah, what I mean, you know, build a e E10 or an E30 drift yeah. car or something like that. Now that you know chassis and fitting an, an engine in it, because yeah. I know a lot of you guys like the weight and trying to get the engine back and just some things. You know, there's some limitations with chassis. Yeah. Now it's kind of like okay, you got these bricks of batteries. They weigh so much, but you can put them back here. You can put them in the front. You can put them. Trust in me, the I was seat. already thinking right behind the driver's seats. Yeah. Well, and and take a look behind our driver's seats. That's we had a battery pack in there for our Pikes Peak version yeah. of this. Um, and you know now the batteries are so much smaller they just it fits in the engine bay. Yeah, I like right. the simplicity of that too because yeah. you're like party back here, charging up there. Just one cable down the tunnel. Right. Like that's the nice simple. thing though. All the electronics go through the old drive shaft yeah. tunnel. So. Perfect. Yeah. yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, it seems great. I mean, like honestly, like you said, it's not like a replacement for it, but now it's in another arena to play in and have fun with. Yeah. So it's awesome. And honestly, it could be at this point like it could be a replacement. It seems to be pretty rad. Yeah. I got in a gas and again, car it's, after it's, driving and it, It's like an addition too, you know. Yeah, it's exactly. Not, uh, you know, we're just we're car guys. I'm a gasser. My dad was a gasser. You yeah. know, and and sometimes people see what we're doing, and for whatever reason, they just don't treat it like a turbo or a supercharger. Right. And that's what it is. It's yeah. just more power in a different way to get the power. Yeah. It still has tires and a steering wheel, and you guys can still drive the. Hello. Yeah, no, like I said, like yeah. it, this thing driving it is no different than taking out like an E36 M3. It just has a sh
load more power. <laughs> yeah, and it doesn't have that crappy traction control they have. Right, right, right. right. <laughs> it kills all your power. For once, sure. Once you hit a puddle. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's wild. It's super yeah. fun. Well, thanks yeah. for having me on. And, yeah, uh, real yeah, pleasure. No, no problem. To, yeah. I'm glad we got to see this and drive it. It took a little bit of time, but we figured yeah, it no, out. Oh, it's great, man. Fantastic. And, uh, thanks yeah, for man. Having us it's out. awesome. Yeah. All right. All right. We'll see you soon. Yeah, huh? man. Thanks. Okay. Take care.